Excellent. So this morning I got up, I got up really early and I went to Kyle's house and then we uh, went to LAX and then we flew from LAX and now we're in Austin. We're invited here by NVIDIA and they're supposed to tell us about some fantastic new stuff or so we're told. Also DreamHack is going on here. I have no idea if that has anything to do with what we're going to be uh, here for. But uh, we just arrived. We're in good spirits. Yep. Kyle agrees and has much to add to it's this hot. particular... Uh, it's hot. It's hot as it's like, hell. It's Haiti too. It's not that bad. Hot as hell. Anyway, uh, here's our here's our ride. Woo! Let's go. Luke is here, it's and it's cool. Kevin from TechSource. Yeah. Say hi. Hey, hey, I'm vlogging. Here's Jay. Texting the wife. <laughs> what are you saying? Everybody has bad days. We've had our fill of food and beer. We've and spoken, now it is time to chill. We've spoken enough, and it was way too simple. No, it was more difficult than I, we were expecting. I feel as though it wasn't very speakeasy. Like, we had to speak yell. In there. It wasn't season. even a password to get in. What kind of speakeasy just lets people in? It was not very easy to actually talk in there, was it? No, but it was not. They had a DJ. It, was, it seemed cool when you walk in, you try to have conversation, you're like, whoa, I don't, this is why I don't go to clubs, because I can't hear shit. Yeah. That's why everyone loses their voice at CES. It's not the talking See, in the my, interviews, my, it's the parties. My voice is already half gone. Me too. Tell? But we got amazing snowman wristbands because yeah, we, we really. Hey. And, and uh, hey, big thanks to NVIDIA for inviting us and for all the free drinks. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's right, NVIDIA. That thanks. was good. Oh, yeah. I forgot about those guys. Woohoo! So we've been here for a couple days now. NVIDIA has been giving us demonstrations and tech demos and, and just lots of briefings and that kind of stuff. There's some stuff we can talk about, there's some stuff we can't talk about. And of course, the big announcement was the new GTX 1080 and the new GTX 1070 graphics cards, which will be launching and available for sale on May 27th. So I'm gonna come back to those as far as the, some of the specs and whatnot. I wanted to talk about the four primary key points that NVIDIA was, was kind of sharing with us as far as new technology that they developed, that being uh, number one is Ansel, uh, which is allowing you to take pictures in game with kind of a free uh, floating camera. Um, it's sort of an art form that's been developing, taking a really nice AAA title that has really nice, well-designed, you know, landscapes, that kind of thing, taking pictures of it. And um, people have figured out ways of doing this, but NVIDIA wanted to make it a little bit simpler for them. So using Ansel, which needs to be integrated into the video game by the video game developer, you can do stuff like pausing time and then getting your free roam camera to move around, look at stuff from different angles and then snap pictures. Uh, you can also apply filters like you would do with you know, Instagram or something like that. Uh, you can take the picture in EXR mode, which basically gives you HDR capability so you can go and post and really uh, play with the dynamic range to turn day to night or that kind of thing. Uh, you can also capture in super resolution up to 32 times the resolution that you're actually viewing the game at. So that means you can get screen caps and stuff like 46,000 by 26,000 resolution. Uh, they're basically saying it's only really limited by like capacity the size of your hard drive. So um, for any of you guys who really like taking pictures in game screenshots, uh, it's pretty exciting. A couple more things you can do with it though. You can take 360 stereo shots. So basically it takes the 360 shot of everything that's going around you in the game. And then you can take that and either, either display it like as a single image and kind of gives you a wraparound shot, or you can take it with some uh, VR device like an HTC Vive we have down here. You can use Google uh, goggles and you can basically, you know, look around in the 3D image that you took uh, in 360 and you can share that with friends and all that good stuff. So that was pretty cool. I thought that was interesting. Not something I was expecting. Uh, we also have VRWorks Audio and they've only told us a little bit about this so far. But VRWorks Audio is basically taking the concept of audio, 3D positional audio, particularly for VR scenarios, and how to process that in such a way that it will sound appropriate to anyone in a virtually created 3D environment. So 
it's actually a strange and interesting cross between like phys -ex or the physics based calculations that they do as they're rendering stuff and you know objects that move around but instead applying that same theory to actual sound so sound you know occurs from a specific points in the virtual world and then it might travel straight over to your ear or it might bounce off of other things there might be sound waves that sort of hit things and, and approach your ear at different times and recreating that is actually a bit of a challenge so they're using an nvidia gpu to do effectively like ray tracing of the audio paths and then re uh, using that to simulate the sound that you hear to give you a more immersive experience with VR. I'm gonna skip the 1080 and I'm gonna save that for last. What I wanna talk about is something called simultaneous multi-projection, SMP. Now, this is difficult to explain, but basically consider this. What you're watching right now is a camera pointed at me, which has an image, a 2D image that you see. The camera represents your point of view and I or whatever you're viewing is in front of you. Now, if you're watching just a monitor, that's fairly simple. It's a 2D uh, image. We've been doing that with video games for quite a while. A video game engine will create the world around you and then it goes through the pipeline and eventually the graphics card will rasterize an image and display that on, sc on the screen for you for a short period of time. The issue with situations like VR and with multiple monitors is when you're taking a 2D image and stretching it, like you would do with three monitors. If you were to then take those monitors and maybe angle them in towards your face a little bit more, give you more of a wraparound view, it's still rendering it as a long rectangle effectively. Although when you're moving it in, that would actually change your perspective and point of view. So what they do with uh, simultaneous multi-projection is they provide multiple camera angles and they render each one out. They're called viewports. And uh, they can do that in order to give you a much better experience with a uh, triple monitor setup, for example. And uh, I'm actually kind of looking forward to that. Uh, even more appropriately for VR situations, so if you're wearing VR goggles, you basically have some displays right here that are project they're creating an image, and then that's actually going through some lenses before it actually hits your eye. Now, if they were to just render it as they would typically render like a 2D image, they would actually be rendering more than what, than what you're seeing because the lenses through distortion are they're kind of cropping out some of the image, so you're not seeing everything that's actually there. The technique they're using is to use these viewports and they can basically set these up multiple ones for each eye. So what they showed us was a demonstration where they had four viewports for one eye. All of them kind of curved a little bit so that the projection hits those, or th that's what's rendered, goes through the, uh, the, the lens and then it hits your eye. It looks perfectly normal to you. By using the viewports, they can only render the pixels that they need to render. And then they also have the expandability for that. So you can kind of see how viewports can be very useful for uh, both improving the uh, performance by making sure that you're only rendering what is actually needed to be rendered, what you're actually gonna see. And then also accounting for stuff like different uh, situations where you know, you're looking at things from different angles as you would with VR or as you would with uh, multiple monitors. Now, on top of simultaneous multi-projection that I've already hopefully given you a rough explanation of, we also have what they're calling single pass stereo for VR because when, VR, when you have VR you have two displays, one for each eye. And prior to now they were rendering stuff uh, one for each eye. With, uh, with single pass stereo for VR, they basically do one pass instead of two and again, it greatly reduces the GPU overhead. But uh, let's move on to the last thing, which is of course the GTX 1080 and 1070. We don't know a whole lot about the 1070 yet, apart from the fact that it has a very competitive price point, $380 is what they're telling us, and it will be based roughly on the same GPU that the GTX 1080 is. They're telling us it has about 6.5 teraflops of raw performance, eight gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, as opposed to the GDDR5X 1080 is gonna use, Again, $380, and that should be available in a couple different editions from NVIDIA, as well as custom-designed uh, versions for board partners. Now for the 1080, we have some more specs to share. So 2,560 uh, 2, CUDA cores, uh, a base clock of 1607 and a boost clock of 1733. Uh, it has eight gigabytes of GDDR5X, a single eight pin power connector, because it's only drawing, uh, or uh, we're assuming the TDP is about 180 watts and it has nine teraflops of uh, compute performance. So that's pretty impressive. 1080 will cost $600 for the uh, standard edition, and then there's a founder's edition that's $700, still more details yet to come on that. Uh, very competitive price points, considering that it is a much 
much faster than a Titan X. It's actually faster than 980s and SLI, and the 1070 even, they say, will outperform the Titan X, or at least give you kind of equivalent, equivalent performance. As for IO on the 1080, you got DisplayPort 1.2, but they're telling, uh, three actually, DisplayPort 1.2 ports. They're telling us they are ready for DisplayPort 1.3 and 1.4 whenever those are standardized, I suppose. One, DisplayPort 1.4, for example, can do 4K at 120 hertz. That's pretty exciting. You also get a single HDMI 2.0B port, as well as a dual link DVI. Uh, and then the last thing about the 1080, kind of go along with it, because this will, of course, support SLI multi-GPU configurations. They have a new SLI HB bridge that's uh, high bandwidth, very straightforward. That's for two-way SLI configurations, and it, it look, kind of looks cool and has the NVIDIA logo on it. Of course, this is all information direct from NVIDIA. A lot of stuff is still under NDA. Uh, we don't have any actual independent reviews yet or independent benchmarks, so that is all forthcoming. Uh, but stay tuned because I will be giving you some of that information as well as some of the other fantastic people that you probably saw in my video. Thank you very much for watching this. Uh, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel for more tech videos. We'll see you next time.